Now, as you've seen, there's not only the chart gallery here in the context menu, there's also something called list. And it might seem like a very short uh, entry here, but actually this is one of the most powerful modules besides the chart module. So let's see what list can do for us. If you click on list, it will open the list module and it will load all the symbols uh, one after the other in a list and it will show some columns here in the top giving more detailed information, the last price, the difference to the previous day, actually the previous price and the date when this was updated last. What we also have is a toolbar and a menu here. So if you want to go from the list to a chart, you simply double click as always. You click like this and look at the next chart, go to 3M, easy as that. Or you can also use the little chart icon up here. Now, let's go through the toolbar first. From left to right, when we look at uh, the first icon, it is the icon which we know already from the chart or from other modules. You can select the symbols which you want to view here. So you can either select a single symbol or you can go for the last used one. So you have only, uh, you add 3M, but it will only appear once. So the system will automatically sort duplicates out. Now the next button will allow you to remove values. So you can select Coca-Cola, delete, and it's gone. You can also press the delete key on your keyboard and you can scroll through like this. If your keyboard, you delete, let's say Chevron, and then it's gone. Next icon is updating the list. So this will recalculate all the columns. Typically, this is done automatically, so you don't need this. Just if there are some complex calculations for the list columns which don't update automatically, then you can force the update here if you want, don't want to wait for an update. And so that's quite handy. Next button is, as you've seen already, open the chart. And then we can add additional list columns. We will dive into this uh, shortly. And then you have some export functions. You can print the list. You can uh, like this. You can uh, save an image of the currently viewed list here. You can send an image of the list by email. It's the same export functionality as we have seen in the chart export already. So I'll not go into the details here. The same stuff. We can upload this image to an FTP server. Again, the same as in the chart export functionality. And we can copy all the values here to the clipboard. If we do this right now and we insert them back here, you see this is a tab separated list of all the values and seen exactly as on this uh, list here. Now in the back, if you have seen it, it was just colored in green. And this was very nice that it just happened because this is what happens when new data comes in. So anytime there is new data, from our data vendor. In this case, it's a delayed internet feed, the free one from Yahoo, which is updated every five minutes. So five minutes just passed, it loaded new data, and the list detected this and uh, re refreshed. So the timestamp is updated, it's 15 minutes delayed, and we have the current prices here. And the green box indicated that there was a positive change, so the numbers increased. If there's a red box, it will indicate that the numbers decreased. So if you see a decrease in prices, then, then a red box will shortly light up. And if there's a price increase, then a green box will shortly uh, light up. And this way you can see very easily in which direction prices are developing. What you can do also is you can click on the column headers to sort. Now you see the little icon here, now it's sorted alphabetically reversed. Now it's again normal sorting. Um, you can sort any column. Now this is sorted numerically, just like that. And sometimes it's interesting to sort um, for multiple columns at one time. So let me close the chart for more visibility here. So if you want to sort by multiple columns, that's also uh, possible because we can just go to preferences and toggle the multi-column sort bar. And this is something where you can simply say, okay, the first column to sort should be the name. So you drag it up here. Now the second column to sort would be the 
at the symbol maybe or the date and to see how this looks in real life um, maybe let's get rid of this column again because we don't need it uh, because it's not duplicate we don't have any duplicate names so multi-column sorting will not do anything but let's look at the date the date is always the same so let's sort by date for the first time and you see nothing happens I double clicked so this is why it opened the chart so this will not do anything because it will sort by this column and this column is just the same value for all the stocks but if I add the name or the close as a second volume value to sort so drag it up here now it will sort by date first and then it will sort by close decreasing so increasing by close decreasing the close decreasing date by increasing close price so you can have any combinations you can even drag the next one up here now you see there's 3602 two times just by incident let's use this fact and pull up the name here now because now we can change the direction the order of this now we can simply switch those two columns by changing the sort order that's quite convenient that they have the same price <laughs> I didn't expect this so this is not scripted as you can see this is just a real life system so let me close the multi-column sort bar again and simply go for sorting by name that's enough for me right now now let's see you have quite a lot of uh, symbols in here if you quickly want to check for something um, in a numerical column like the price and you say you know you only want to look at stocks which trade above let's say forty dollars so you can use the little icon here with the little drill down icon which is actually not a drill down it's a filter so this icon is the sort indicator this icon is a filter indicator so it is only available for numerical columns if you click it then you can enter an expression like greater 40 press enter and there it is you have a real-time sorted or filtered list here and only the values above 40 are in here you can see the currently applied filters down here in the bottom and lower in the status bar and you can have greater 40 here in this column then you can have um, let's say a second condition where you say but it must be smaller 80 in the previous price I mean I totally make this up but um, just bear with me this is just a technic dem technical demo so when we look at this the close is greater than 40 and the previous price is smaller than 80 then you have these values up here I've seen those increased those decreased decreased increased just and then the data was updated so let's get rid of the filter again to see all the values and we just click on the little X sign here in the bottom area and there we are all the filters are cleared and we are back to the uh, beginning now what I've already started to talk about is that you can add columns up here and this is now a very powerful concept so let's say I make it a little bigger so we have place for additional columns I get rid of column first to have more space so we right click on one of them and select, select uh, remove column okay you get a little message that this template has not been saved and we will get into templates shortly so let's not show it anymore I click OK so we deleted the symbol column and let's say we want to add another column so we click on add and then it will present us a list of all the available columns and let me go from top to bottom here and show you the the most interesting ones which you can add and um, play around with the first one is a three month chart so this is something uh, which will add a column here there's a new hint because it will say you don't have to click this button all the time you can also right click on the column and this is what we'll do in the future so let's not show this anymore so instead of clicking here you can also right click here or in any empty space that's the same okay so now you have the a little tiny chart showing the trend or showing the actual development over the last three months you can scale it like this and uh, so that's very powerful we introduced this in 2005 I think um, now in 2010 in Excel it was called sparklines and it was the big new invention so if you've seen the fever trader you would have just 
it would, this would have not been something new for you. Let's see what else we have. We can show like, um, some more well, price values, the bid ask, the volume, the cash flow. And then comes something really, really cool because you can also display chart templates. So when we click in a chart template, we can select, okay, we have the My Stock Analysis template, which we have seen in the chart gallery just before and which we have used in our chart so far. So we know it contains a moving average. And so let's use it as our uh, list column and let's see what happens. So we select the chart template and then we can select what we want to see in the list column. So we can either see the last signal which the chart template created, either by a cell. Let's see how this looks like. And now the Fibber Trader will calculate all the values in the list, apply the chart template, and will extract the last signal. So this is, as you've seen, really, really fast. You can also use it as a filter to quickly scan through. You can, let's take the, the first icon. It says a cell for 3M. Let's double check. And we can see when we load the template, my stock analysis, there's a sell signal in the in the as last. Let's see, we have a, s a buy signal somewhere, Johnson, Johnson. You have a buy signal in the last position. So this is what it simply extracts and shows you. Now, if you right click on a column, then you can also redefine the, what we just entered. So we have the set parameters for chart template here do it and we're back at our little selection mo module so we can also include the the details to this last signal so let's see it will calculate again make it a little bigger and it will show us at what price we should have bought how many shares on which date so we get some more details now what else do we have we can show, show the periods since the last signal so you see, the last signal was 16 days ago. There's a signal today, so this might be interesting for us. Okay, there's a sell signal today. Now, in case you're asking yourself, okay, now I don't see the signal type anymore, how do I use this number? Of course, you can add two times the chart template. So you can uh, simply select, you can simply select uh, add column, add another chart template, my stock analysis, Last signal, okay. And now you see there's a uh, sell signal 16 days ago. Easy as that. There's a buy signal six days ago. There's a sell signal today. You can also sort by this and you see these are today. These are the most frequent signals, just like that. So let's see what else can we do. Um, we can have a prediction. Um, there are the predictions are have to be predictions have to be supported by the indicators. So indicators can actually create something called a prediction, which is a possible signal in the future. A prediction is also thrown by a stop system. So if you have a a stop, like a trailing stop, it will know when it should sell and in the moment it knows when to sell, it's a prediction for the system. So if you know you, you should be bought at five, uh, 50 euro and you will sell at uh, 45 euro, then 45 euro will be the prediction in the column. And we can also show the change in percent. So this will simply show you some additional information about the chart price development. So this was the, the chart column, chart template column. Very powerful and you can use it really extensively.